Commentaries from the Heart with Father Anthony Agnes. Solemnity of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. First reading, Deuteronomy chapter 7, 6 to 11. Second reading, 1 John chapter 4, 7 to 16. Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 11, 25 to 30. Today's reflection is on the theme, You are mine. Friends, as we know, today's celebration is an important one for us Catholics. Because this celebration of Sacred Heart is in actual fact linked with something we had already celebrated. Good Friday. Because today, the Sacred Heart that we are celebrating is about the love of Christ to open his heart on the cross for us by dying on the cross. And we are told that on the cross, his heart was pierced. It is this heart that was pierced that we celebrate today. So today's celebration is a continuation of Good Friday. God's love for us. God's love for the world. It is also connected to what we have on Holy Thursday. You know, last week, for some of you, last week, Thursday, or this last past, uh, this past Sunday, you had what we call the Corpus Christi. It also comes from, from Holy Thursday. You know, these celebrations are kind of continuations, or let's say, um, extra days to celebrate these things that happened, but happened during the Holy Week. Because on Holy Thursday, when Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist, and the next time we had to go for Good Friday, so we didn't have any time to celebrate with joy and this giving of God, this mystery of God that He gave to us, this greatest gift He left for us. Because the next was Good Friday. So the church now says, put aside a day outside of Lent that we can now celebrate in joy with all feasting. And so we have Corpus Christi, we have Corpus Christi yes. And then on Good Friday, when Jesus died for us, his side was pierced. Again, the mood wasn't that of joy. We were sad. You know, Holy Week, with all this solemnity, sobriety. Again, the church looks for a day outside of Holy Week to celebrate this great gift of God. We have the sacred heart of Jesus. It's a celebration that is linked to Good Friday. Just as Corpus Christi is linked to Holy, Holy Thursday. Okay. This is a bit of a liturgical background. So today's celebration is very important. It is for this reason that today is also the, a feast for priests. They call it a day of consecration for priests, of priests. So today, if I have time, say one Hail Mary for your priest, especially the priest who assists at your parish, your parish priest, your spiritual director, the one who baptized you, the one who confirmed you, if any, the one who baptized your children, no, any priest that played any role in your life, just a one Hail Mary for that priest, indeed for the priests of the world. Because why is today also a day for priests? Because in the heart of the priesthood is the heart of Christ. And so, of course, I'm Father Antonio Agnes, I have my own heart. But once you become a priest, your heart is now joined to that of Christ. Actually, Christ takes over um, your heart. So, out of this love, this same heart, priesthood is born. So we pray for priests today because we are asking God to let the heart of priests become the heart, like the heart of Jesus himself. Of course, we know that, and you know that we are not perfect as priests. So daily pray for us so that in the end, the heart of all the priests, we know our priests will become like the heart of Jesus, which we are celebrating today. We are not perfect, but God is the grace that is keeping us. So say a prayer for priests today also. Okay, so... With this in mind, um, we look at uh, the readings for today. You know, interestingly, Moses in the first reading from Deuteronomy it says, "You are people consecrated to the Lord, consecrated, set apart. Actually, you are set apart because you have been chosen by God, and this chosen, chosen by God, chosen by God is not just." You know, when you say you choose something, in our own mind, sometimes we, <clears throat> like these days, because everything is electronic, you know, when you say you're choosing something, just like a click away. But the word used for consecrate, to choose, to set apart, is like handpick, handpick, to handpick something. 
you know, if you have three things in front of you and you are choosing one, you hand pick it, which means it's a careful selection, conscious selection. So Moses tells them in the first reading, Deuteronomy, that look, do you think that you are the, the most outnumbered people on the earth? Why God chose you? No, you are actually the least of all peoples. It was for love of you and to keep his oath, his word to your fathers, that Christ, that God chose you. This is coming from the first reading. God has handpicked you. So you are special. You are unique. It's not because of what you have, what you had had, where you come from, where you are. These are nothing before God. It's just out of love. Nothing else. And these days, we human beings, as you know, we choose people, we choose things because of our preference, for our personal gain, you know. But today's readings and today's celebration tells us, look, God doesn't have any other motive for calling you, choosing you to be who you are. He has no selfish ambition, as we say. It's just total love, to, to pure love. And then we look at the same love of God being shown in the gospel reading. He says, look, Father, thank you for hiding these from those who were supposedly to know, the clever, the learned, and giving to mere children, those who were not counted, who didn't deserve it. This is how God works for you, works for us. He takes what we don't deserve, what is not for us, which we can't own because we can't get because we don't have qualifications, we don't have what it takes to get it, and then makes it our own. Open your heart for God to use you in this way. Thing that you never dreamt of will become yours. Ambition that you think will never happen will happen because God is the one going to do the work for you, the selection. And Jesus ends by saying, come to me. Who? All you who labor and overburdened. <laughs> so they say, stop there. Come to me, everybody is coming to him. No, stop there. Do you labor? Are you overburdened? Come. So now, you see, gradually the selection is been going down to a further detail. Only those who labor, only those who are overburdened should come. So some will stop a step aside and others will keep coming. I think this is me and this is you. Because we who are here, we know how it is when we labor and we have a burden. We have so many worries, issues at the work, at the house, at the families, with the children, you know, with our vocation. He says, do not worry. If you have a care, you have a worry, you are the one I am saying, come to me. This is an invitation to all of us Christians, Catholics, especially for those who sometimes find life burdensome, overburdened, find life difficult. He says, I will give you rest. I will give you will. It's an assurance. He will give us rest. He says, shoulder my yoke and learn from me. The only time you hear Jesus saying, learn from me. Nowhere in the Bible. God has asked us to learn from him. But here he says, learn from me. And the only thing he wants us to learn from me is that for I am gentle and humble in heart. His gentleness, his humility. If only we can learn to be gentle like Christ. If only we can learn to be humble like Christ. We shall indeed become children of God. But the good thing about learning is that <laughs> it is not a one day issue. Those who are students will know. You don't learn only by one time reading and then you know everything. No. We learn by gradually, every day, continuously reading, learning. Then it becomes what we learn becomes part of you. You only learn with time. And so don't worry. It's a day to day, day by day, trying. Day to day, exercise. Learn to be humble and gentle like Jesus today. Learn to be humble and gentle like he says tomorrow. It's a daily, daily, daily work. And this is possible because he will be our help. Then, let me end then. Jesus says, you are mine. Indeed, you are his. We are his. It's an assurance because we are his. You are his. 
you and mine, you know, those three words that no, no Christian should ever forget. They come from Isaiah. You are mine. Whenever life is heavy, whenever you don't understand what's happening around you, you feel like giving up. Just remember these three words of Jesus, of God. You are mine. It means that you are secured. You are guaranteed. And then whatever follows is in the hands of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us your heart. We thank you for giving us your heart through the heart of Jesus. As we celebrate today this loving heart of Jesus, make our hearts like unto thine, the heart of our family members, the hearts of our husbands, wives, our friends, our loved ones. Our own hearts, may they become like unto thy, unto thine, unto yours. Father, we pray for all those hearts that are burdened and, and laboring, suffering. May today's celebration bring rest to those challenges in their lives. And for us in particular, may we also find joy in your rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ. <laughs>